An active stretch of thunderstorms and severe weather likely throughout the United States throughout the end of this week, bringing the threat of tornadoes, large hail, and strong straight line winds. Welcome in, everybody. Great to see you on this Thursday, April 17th. Yeah, getting pretty deep into the month of April and deep into severe weather season. If you haven't noticed it, well, you'll definitely notice it this week, I think, for a lot of folks, as this kind of sharp boundary of severe weather begins to set up and we get a storm to form by the weekend. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. It's a great way to stay up to date during this active pattern and any future active events that may be on the horizon. I'll be here for you year-round through severe weather season now into hurricane season then eventually back into winter weather season by the end of 2025. I uh, also want to say thank you to our channel members. Appreciate you folks. And if you would like to become a channel member, you can hit the join button down below next to the subscribe button. All right, folks, let's dive on into things and start talking weather. Next to me, you can see the latest run of our European computer model. This is our lightning uh, flash density uh, kind of rate uh, that the model is projecting. So those splotches of bright colors you see, those are areas of thunderstorms likely to develop between now and about a week or so out from now. And you can see kind of those rounds of storms working through much of the country. Some folks, though, will get severe storms on top of just uh, the normal thunderstorm activity that you might expect during the spring months. Uh, let's take a look at it on satellite loop, and you can kind of see how this is unfolding out there right now. We've got uh, a couple areas of active weather to mention. We've got this pocket of storms left over from yesterday, working through portions of the Midwest into the Mississippi River Valley. And by the time we go through today, that should die off any new area of storm activity likely to develop. You can see this area of spin over the Rockies. That's going to eventually work east throughout the day, and we could see some storms fire up uh, kind of into this warm, moist sector out in front of that storm. And that's where we could see strong storms, including large hail, straight line winds, and maybe even an isolated tornado today. And then through the weekend, uh, this turns into a much larger area to watch for severe weather. And one of the big culprits for that, obviously, is this storm I just mentioned. But out in front of it, a big ridge beginning to build in. That's bringing the heat, the humidity, and the instability for these storms to work with. So uh, kind of a tandem between the lift from our trough and the instability uh, from our ridge. And in that area in between is just where all the ingredients for severe weather are coming together. The instability, the warm air, the cold air, uh, the dry air, the moist air, really all of it uh, kind of uh, coming together here over the plains over the next couple of days. And due to that, the Storm Prediction Center has issued new areas to watch for severe weather. Uh, you can see this is for... Uh, tomorrow, or excuse me, today rather. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get the day right eventually, right? Uh, we've got an enhanced risk for severe weather. That's a level three out of five there in the orange. That does include Des Moines, Omaha, and Lincoln right along the US 80 corridor. And the main threat today is going to be large hail. If I kind of move it to the hail map, you can see that red area. That's where we could see uh, a significant hail and a high likelihood of significant hail. Again, in that same corridor I just mentioned from Des Moines over to Lincoln and Omaha. Uh, it could be hail larger than quarter size, potentially getting up into ping pong, maybe larger than that, maybe baseball size hail, not out of the question, uh, kind of that gorilla hail that uh, you often hear storm chasers use that term. Going to be one of those days out here into Iowa and portions of Nebraska. We could see severe storms as far north, even as Minneapolis, uh, Rochester, La Crosse, Dubuque, even over to Davenport, back towards Rockford and Madison. Could see some strong storms. The wind threat today, also there, not quite as large as the hail threat. And then the tornado threat, uh, also slightly uh, enhanced here in that corridor, uh, right around Omaha, over to Fremont, Columbus, uh, and uh, Wahoo, uh, Nebraska, fun town name that one is, uh, Blair, Harlem, uh, Atlantic, Iowa, and uh, back down towards Red Oak, Iowa. So uh, a tornado not out of the question today. However, I really think large hail is going to be the bigger threat. We'll talk about why that is in just a moment. Now, let's move it ahead to tomorrow. Yeah, another day of severe weather, a slight risk, level two out of five, anywhere from Michigan all the way back down into Texas and Oklahoma could see severe storms. So yeah, you get the idea. Uh, it's not going to just be one round today, but multiple rounds. Tomorrow, the main threats, uh, we'll look at tornadoes. Not going to be a huge deal tomorrow, but a couple isolated tornadoes possible anywhere shaded in on the green. Uh, then we get to the wind threat. That'll probably be the bigger threat tomorrow in that uh, area of severe weather. And then we get to the hail threat. Kind of the same old, but we do have an area where we could see significant hail hatched here uh, just to the southwest of Oklahoma City, back down towards the Red River Valley, towards Lawton and Wichita Falls. And uh, Seymour, Texas, could see uh, exceptionally large hail for your Friday afternoon and evening. 
Then we're not done quite yet. Take a look at Saturday, the start of the weekend, uh, and Easter weekend. So this could affect some plans for some folks. Another day of severe weather. Uh, anywhere from Pittsburgh all through through the Ohio Valley down into Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Could see uh, strong storms in that time frame. And then we'll go, uh, go into Easter Sunday itself. Yeah, another day of severe weather. Watching Sunday, I think um, today... Tomorrow and into Saturday, we're going to see severe storms. I think the tornado threat, though, is going to really ramp up a little bit more on Sunday. Uh, and unfortunately, obviously, that's Easter, so not the day you want to see it. And right in the places that just keep getting hit hard this year, Arkansas, back down to the Arklatech, Shreveport, Tyler, uh, into the Mississippi Delta region from, Miss, uh, from Memphis all the way up to St. Louis and back down uh, into uh, Mississippi itself. So uh, severe weather is going to be a common theme now through the end of the week. And obviously, we're going to keep you up to date and keep tracking it for you. With that said, let's take a look at the setup now on our next map. All right, why is severe weather looking like something we need to watch out for? Well, it's really coming back to the spin in the atmosphere that we're dealing with. And I'll back the map up to where we are this afternoon. Uh, I told you about that spin over Iowa. Yeah, you can see it on our vorticity map. We've got this big trough, all sorts of bright, pretty colors telling me yeah, there's spin in the atmosphere that is in that region. It's going to slowly work east and eventually kind of dig to the southeast. You'll watch as that moves in. Now, really tomorrow, meaning Friday and into Saturday, the theme is just going to be this kind of corridor of severe weather where I think it's going to be more scattered to isolated, not expecting a huge tornado threat either of those days, mainly because we're going to be kind of uh, running into thermodynamic and kinematic problems that would, you know, maybe not be super supportive for severe weather. Uh, we do have wind shear. We definitely have that. We do have some instability, but we also have some capping in the environment. I'll talk about that in a moment uh, on a sounding, but it's just going to be kind of this corridor between the warm ridge to the south and the cooler and uh, more wind energy uh, back up towards the Rockies. But eventually, by the time we get into Sunday, again, that's the Friday and Saturday setup, notice what happens. Pause it right here Sunday morning and afternoon. We get a much more defined uh, piece of energy to dive out here into Oklahoma and Texas. And this is a more classic look for a tornado event and just a severe weather event in general. Much more neutrally tilted trough. That's going to really increase the lift in the atmosphere. Whereas beforehand, it's very positively tilted like I showed you. So that's just going to provide a corridor of severe weather. Uh, I think though, Sunday going to be the bigger day just looking at the maps here. Much more upper level support for severe weather. Again, right over Arkansas, uh, Missouri, portions of... Um, Eastern Oklahoma, East Texas, down to Louisiana, uh, and even potentially into Mississippi on Sunday. And then by Monday, that kind of gets up on into the Great Lakes, maybe a little bit of severe weather into the Northeast and Great Lakes on uh, Monday. I think the question at that point will be, though, do we have any instability to work with? Then after that, we get a little bit of a break, I think. Still stormy, but not as big of a uh, huge severe weather pattern. We'll get a little bit of a break during the start of next week uh, is generally what the models are showing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get to it now on some more model data. This is a brand new model run of the NAM model. Let me refresh it. So uh, again, brand new, hot off the press. You'll be the first to see it. And uh, we'll take a look here. So uh, this evening and afternoon, notice here's our storm back into Iowa. You can see some of these storms beginning to form anywhere from, uh, again, Lincoln back to Omaha into Des Moines. That's where the severe weather threat will be the largest. Large hail being the biggest threat today, like we mentioned, an isolated tornado and strong straight line winds will also be possible in that region. I think it'll be just good old fashioned rain up here into Wisconsin and uh, northern Minnesota, but southern Minnesota back down towards the Iowa border could see a couple severe storms uh, this evening and into the overnight. Now let's get this into tomorrow. That storm kind of fizzles out a little bit. Uh, and then we get to tomorrow afternoon on Friday and into tomorrow night. Uh, the severe weather threat once again kind of develops. going to be probably a bit of a nocturnal threat tomorrow with the low-level jet cranking up. That's that region we looked at. Nothing jumping out here is... Um, you know, a big supercell threat looks really just like clusters of multi-cells. So some hail, uh, some straight line winds, and a couple isolated tornadoes tomorrow, especially in the overnight. Uh, again, could be of a, a bit of a nocturnal threat. Then that gets us here all the way into Saturday afternoon. And you can see really going to be more of the same Saturday, I think, as we get another round of kind of just this corridor of stormy activity to develop that could produce severe weather. So uh, the next couple of days, not textbook for severe weather, but we are going to see some out of it, I think. The bigger deal, though, like I said, I think comes into Sunday. So I'll move it ahead. Here's a GFS. This is Saturday afternoon. Again, you can see that corridor of severe weather anywhere from the Ohio Valley back down into Texas and Oklahoma. Could see strong storms there for your Saturday afternoon. Keep it going in time. 
and uh, notice uh, we get a much more defined surface low pressure to develop your Sunday afternoon. Uh, this is a much more common look for a tornado threat. Uh, you can see here's your surface low, here is your cold front, you've got your warm front, and everything kind of between the two and out in front of it is your warm sector. So East Texas, Arkansas, Southern Missouri, uh, into Louisiana and into Mississippi, likely going to be the hot spot here, I think, on Sunday afternoon. Again, that's Easter Sunday. So uh, if you got plans outdoors, this really probably couldn't come at a worse time, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, we'll monitor the threat there. And you can even see in the model here by Sunday evening, you come more, uh, excuse me, you kind of get more of these embedded supercells uh, along the line. So uh, that's a day I'll be watching for a tornado threat definitely on Sunday here, according to some of the latest model data. And then by Monday, again, that moves northbound, maybe even some snow for the UP and Michigan. Northern Wisconsin would not surprise me. And we'll watch Monday afternoon for a severe weather threat, maybe into Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York State, maybe back down into West Virginia, who had a huge hail earlier this week. Um, they're in West Virginia. So uh, we'll watch it, monitor it. But uh, again, I think Sunday is going to be the key day to watch here with this setup. All right, let's take a look now at the tornado threat a little bit more in depth here. And uh, this is the significant tornado parameter uh, fixed layer um, composite that we use. Basically takes a whole bunch of ingredients for tornadoes, puts it together in one model and sees who has the best shot at seeing uh, that potential of a significant tornado, that being an EF2 or higher. But, uh, you know, this can be used for lower end tornadoes too. Uh, but generally more for the significant side. Uh, today, you do see a little flare up right where the SPC has that area to watch that 5% uh, section there into portions of Nebraska and Iowa. Not a huge deal today. Again, we'll watch it. We could see uh, a couple tornadoes, but uh, hail going to be the bigger threat today. Now we'll go into tomorrow afternoon. Uh, notice we do have some pockets of ingredients for severe weather or uh, tornadoes more specifically, especially back down towards Oklahoma. Uh, I think if we do see a tornado tomorrow, going to be in that region. However, still not a huge threat tomorrow. We'll talk about why that is on the next map. That's going to be the sounding analysis that we do. Uh, so that's for tomorrow. Still not a huge tornado threat. Uh, we'll get it into Saturday. And you'll notice on Saturday afternoon, again, really not that big of a tornado threat. A couple areas, you know, maybe down into Texas, uh, areas up near Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, trying to maybe get a little bit of severe weather going. Uh, and then we go into Sunday and uh, you'll notice, again, it's not huge, but I think it's bigger than the previous days. And this is just one model run as well, so it's not going to be a uh, gospel. Don't take it home and run with it. But you do see a little bit of a flare up down here uh, where I think we could have a higher end tornado threat there for Sunday afternoon into Arkansas, uh, into Missouri and kind of surrounding areas. So this isn't going to be a tornado outbreak by any means, I don't think, but could absolutely produce a couple tornadoes and maybe even one or two strong tornadoes or significant tornadoes. Uh, let's take a look at a sounding today. This is for Iowa, uh, and uh, this is a pretty good uh, sounding for hail, definitely. We've got a lot of cape out there, about 2,000 joules per kilogram, upwards of 3,000 in some places. Um, that's going to be more than enough to create severe weather. Now, the reason the tornado threat isn't huge today, and uh, today could end up uh, not being as big of a deal, um, is this part right here of our skew team. We've got a pretty good capping inversion in place this evening. I do think it'll eventually get eroded, but that could lead to these storms being quite elevated, uh, meaning not so much surface-based, but more uh, elevated from the surface, hence the name elevated, right? And generally, those types of storms struggle a little bit more to produce tornadoes. Um, so I think that's why, again, the threat isn't huge today, even if uh, we do have a pretty good amount of wind shear. You can see here in our hodograph, a lot of low-level curvature, storm relative helicity suggests supercells are likely to form. Uh, or at least probable to form there. And uh, our STP values, again, hitting uh, about two or three, our energy helicity index in that same range. So a lot of things point to there being tornadoes today. However, I think the biggest question mark is going to be the storm structure. While likely to be supercells, are they going to be elevated or can some of these storms become surface-based? If they become surface-based, absolutely could uh, lead to a couple tornadoes. But if they stay more elevated, like maybe this sounding suggests, probably wouldn't be as big of a deal today. Uh, now, tomorrow, I told you Oklahoma, kind of a weird one. Here's a sounding for Oklahoma tomorrow. Kind of the same thing, folks. And this is why uh, the severe weather threat is going to be iffy over the next couple of days. While we will see some, a lot of areas are running into this capping inversion, and that's really increasing our convective inhibition. So while wind shear, more than enough for tornadoes tomorrow, we've got storm relative velocity values upwards of 300, uh, 0 to 1 kilometer shear, more than high enough for strong tornadoes. Uh, you know, we've got um, uh, all sorts of parameters suggesting that we could see a tornado tomorrow. 
Uh, the question is, can the storms even really develop in that area? It will be something to watch. Uh, again, high convective inhibition. It's that way for a lot of folks. So uh, wherever storms can develop, they can absolutely tap into the energy to become severe, maybe even produce a tornado or two anywhere in tomorrow's threat area. Uh, but the question will be, can they really become super deep thunderstorms or are they going to kind of struggle to get going? And that's always a question when you have these positively tilted troughs. But like I said, by Sunday, should become more neutral to negative and uh, likely have a higher end severe weather risk. So we'll watch that for Sunday and tomorrow we'll do a sounding analysis of Sunday's threat. Um, but again, this is for uh, today and then this is tomorrow in Oklahoma, uh, which would be Friday, April 18th. So that's kind of what we're seeing with those models. All right, final thing we'll talk about here. This is from the Euro Ensemble showing the potential of who could see um, kind of what down the road, if you will, or our long range map. And the same thing that we look at all the time, our upper level anomaly map, the red or I guess the orange on this map being ridging or warmer temperatures, generally speaking, and the blue being uh, troughing or cooler temperatures. And often that blue can lead to stormy activity as well. So we'll move ahead into time here and notice by later this week, it's going to really get warm in the east. And I think that's good news for a lot of folks. A lot of us are tired of kind of the cooler spell we've been under. Well, don't worry. Spring is going to be back this weekend. Uh, I know here in Charlotte, at least we're going to be into the upper 80s by Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so most folks are going to be well above average in the temperature department here uh, in the eastern U.S. But again, it's that heat and humidity that could help to fuel some of these storms right along that boundary, like we mentioned earlier, between our troughing our west and our ridging in the east. As for what's coming down the road, though, we've kind of talked about this weekend. By early next week, uh, here's the storm that's going to produce the severe weather, especially on Sunday, like I mentioned. That kind of shoots off up into uh, Canada, and it's out of here for most of us by Monday, especially Tuesday. Again, maybe a little bit of severe weather on Monday. We'll watch for up into the northern uh, kind of Ohio Valley there and into portions of the northeast. But by next week, folks, the ridge really just builds in and takes over. Now, the thing you notice here, by the time we get about 10 days from now to end out April, is this ridge uh, even moves west a little bit. So uh, what that tells me is this is really going to kind of try to cut off the severe weather threat by the end of April. Will we still see strong storms? Yeah, we absolutely could. But generally speaking, uh, this is a classic kind of death ridge, as they call it, uh, or storm chasers call it, because basically it prevents any storms from working into the plains. Uh, and into the east by the end of the month. And you can kind of see that here in the GFS. Here's the weekend storm uh, working on through, bringing you know, everything that we talked about. And after that, we kind of just get afternoon pockets of storms. You get a couple little storm systems that try to ride the ridge, uh, but nothing really showing an organized threat for severe weather. It's more of a kind of just messy severe weather threat. So I think we're going to get you know April showers, April thunderstorms, uh, but severe weather wise, I think now through the weekend will be the big time to watch and then probably a bit of a lull of any big outbreaks. I'm not seeing any, you know, major end of April tornado outbreaks uh, right now on the models. Again, something can change. We'll watch it and keep you up to date. But right now, the severe weather season looks to be relatively tame to end April. Like I said, we got to get through this week and especially the Easter threat, uh, I, I think could be something to watch here. Um, but um, yeah, uh, that's what we're seeing out there right now. Alrighty, folks. Well, that is all I've got for you on this um, Thursday. It is right. I don't know. I've lost uh, lost count at this point. But uh, with that said, y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there. I'll see you all next time.